In October 22, 1844, the biblical calendar, Luni, Solar, Bali Avis, New Moon, Horn Crescent was restored through the Millerite movement, guided by the Holy Spirit. And we are today still wondering why we have not finished the work. Through this study, we want to demonstrate, and it's a very important study, and we, we will encourage you to read all of these manuscripts. Here are material that you can open and find an answer as to what was the study that went on in 1844 that brought about the restoration of the biblical calendar, the true biblical calendar, and why it did not continue afterward. The explanation is found definitely in this particular section here of the six-part series, as we call it, and it demonstrates the validity of October 22, 1844. It was actually from a committee that was set up in 1939, around May, June of 1939, with scholars of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in order to reopen the manuscripts and the research of the Millerites and demonstrate the validity of October 22, 1844 position. These manuscripts are not saying that the biblical calendar is wrong of what the Millerite had found out. Absolutely not. The committee recognized that the research of the Millerite reaching out to October 22nd as the exact terminus of the 2300 years in 1844 is correct. However, what they saw was the discrepancy between observing a seven day Sabbath in 1939 and on Saturday, and now what they saw in the manuscript showing that the calendar of the Bible is based on totally different premises than the Gregorian calendar. So the problem was major and the committee chose to close the files and say nothing to the lay people at the time. You may even want to read this letter here from Andreessen, which was at the time the theologian of the church who actually presented a compromise where the committee would say, yes, the validity of October 22nd, 1844 position is valid based on the biblical calendar. However, they did not show what would happen if we were to follow the biblical calendar. We encourage you to actually click on every one of these, which are research that looks something like this because they're very old, don't expect magnificent material. This one in particular is actually the report of the committee and giving you the plan of action that they followed. The part one was the introductory statement of problem and purpose. Part two, the chronological development up to October 22, 1844. Part three, the October 22 crisis and aftermath, which is the great disappointment where most of the Millerite abandoned the whole study. Then part four is the date of the decree to restore and build Jerusalem. Part five is crucifixion date and astronomical soundness of October 22nd. Part six is the recapitulation, conclusion, and affirmatory statement. So this is what is presented in what we call the six-part series of the validity of October 22nd, 1844. So as you click, this is what you're going to obtain, for example, in this introductory statement. And as you proceed in reading, again, it was all typed. It was not with computer in those days, May 15, 1939. You can see that's the report after the committee had studied the material of the Millerites. And uh, they name also the people on the committee at the time. And you can see the material is actually the original material. It has been simply presented into a digital approach. And basically, this is what we have preserved in our file as well. It looks a bit crooked at times, but it's because of the way the photos were taken for it. So this we encourage you to look into, but do not expect that it's black and white saying that the Sabbath is not Saturday. 
they came to that conclusion in 1939, first time ever, the whole Millerite movement was put under study and scrutiny to see if the 22nd of October, 1844 is a valid date for the Great Day of Atonement, which they declared that it was, but they failed to demonstrate the way that the Millerite calculated that date because they saw that it would definitely bring out the fact that it's not the same calendar that we follow today in order to keep the Sabbath. The conclusion of the matter really was that it is by Eli Frum, which was the chairperson at the time. And it's a very, very nicely written conclusion, very, very good author. And basically, we want to read this paragraph to give you a touch of it, and then the last paragraph of the conclusion. And yet, nothing is said about we're keeping the wrong Sabbath. Don't expect it. It's written in the manuscript because of the demonstration of the biblical calendar that we are keeping not only the wrong Sabbath, but we're, we, we're actually observing the wrong calendar when we keep Saturday. It was he who framed the sun, earth, moon, and stars, projecting them into their appointed courses and holding them there with the precision of infinity, who ordained their cycles, not merely to rule the day and the night, but as undeviating measuring lines to tell off the great prophetic periods of divine revelation and thus to signify the crucial epochs of the ages. It was he who through the centuries has guided the course of human events according to his own inscrutable scheme and schedule for man's redemption, who through his prophet Daniel gave the master key by which to unlock the mystery of the times that we might understand the unfolding fulfillment of his matchless plan of salvation spanning for centuries and now nearing its great consummation. And then he pursued this writing by bringing in the 70 weeks of the book of Daniel, which was extremely highly studied at the time of the Millerite and the appointment of October 22nd, 1844 as the great day of atonement. And basically all of what that movement, the influence of that movement has gone through over the century. And as you continue to study this conclusion, very well written by Elder Froome, you will see, in fact, that they were so close to recognizing that the biblical calendar is the one we should follow. But at the end, they decided to close the files put it into a collection in basically a vault, which was not supposed to be available to the public eyes. It was a pure mistake on the part of the place where we found this particular manuscript. It was a mistake for them to have it sold to us because we purchased it. And yet we know that it was God's hand in this matter in 2007 when we obtained this manuscript. Since then, these manuscripts have been studied, the collection has been expanded, and we have concluded there is no doubt in our mind that the biblical calendar is not based on the Gregorian, solar, pagan, Roman, papal calendar, but it is based on the Luni, solar, Bali, Avis, new moon, horn, crescent calendar. The final paragraph says from Eli Froome, he says, let there be no confusion or uncertainty upon the sanctuary truths. Acquaintance with this unassailable proof and their full justification before the world and the church means spiritual confidence and satisfaction of soul, and in consequence, an aggressive forwarding of the banner of truth in the midst of the collapsing standards and growing uncertainties all about us. We are a people with the heavenly message and a divine mandate to which we must adhere with unswerving allegiance. Because of the refusal of the committee to go forward and revealing what they had found in their research in May of 1939, when they presented this final report, we know through history that by September 1939, World War II was declared. Very similar circumstances, faster than in 1888, 1914, but nevertheless, the consequences are still there to demonstrate that 
because of our insubordination, just like the children of Israel who had to go 40 years around in the wilderness. And we had been told that because of insubordination, we would still be here long. Christ could have air returned in 1889 if we would have accepted the wonderful calendar presented by A.T. Jones and Wagner in 1888, demonstrated to his book, The Two Republics, published in 1891. So that's why the Sunday law in the United States, which was presented by Senator Blair at the Senate, had to be defeated because the plan of God, again, just like in the time of the entry to Canaan, the Lord had to change his plan. And it says that very clearly in the Bible. So he changed his plan because of insubordination. And now in 1939, just like he did in 1888, he had to change his plan and make the world wait to see his true plan of worship. So this is basically what we wanted to show you through this study. And we know some people may not agree with this conclusion, but before you say so, we invite you again to read those six part series completely. And then if that is not enough, we have more here under October 22nd, 1844 restored now. So before you make a final decision that this is not really a very strong conclusion on our part, we invite you to read this manuscript as we have done in order to draw the conclusions that we have done thus far, that we have presented thus far. And this is available for your perusal. And so we pray that you take the time and show wisdom by perusing all this material and see where the Millerites were at at the time of their conclusion of the Day of Atonement in October 22, 1844. All these evidences need to be re-examined in the light of the Great Day of Atonement computation of October 22, 1844. For it is so bold, so utterly non-conventional, so potentially upsetting, radically altering the central aspects of the biblical, astronomical, chronological, historical, cultural, economic, and political understanding of most people, it should not be ignored. We intend through this calendar restoration to begin a most interesting debate and critical discussion of all relevant issues for the last great conflict may have just begun. So may the Lord bless you as you intelligently take the time to read these manuscripts, evaluate them, and draw the right conclusion that the biblical calendar, just like in 1844, when it was restored by God through the Millerite, was rejected in 1888, was rejected in 1939. And this is when you see the League of Nations, which had started a reform for the calendar, the Gregorian calendar, to be changed in the precise time of 1922 to 1939. They shut this particular, and especially with the Second World War, the reform was shut down and it has never been reopened since. And this is what we intend to do with this biblical calendar movement 2020, 2030. And we have already done so by presenting this material and also by distributing more than 27 million calendar thus far since 2022. May the Lord bless you as you research for yourself and see if these things are so.